much. Good to see everybody. My name is Andy Clark. I'm one of the pastors at the church. We definitely like to say we're glad you're here. Hope everybody's enjoying these nice, hot, steamy days we've been having. I hope you're just having a great time. So I'm excited about everybody being here today. Today we have a special service. We're calling it Student Sunday. Student Sunday, okay? And what we're doing today is we're talking about our youth program, which we call High Rock Student. So, so I hope everybody's excited. And it's good, right? It's good to talk about it. It's good to honor them. It's good to acknowledge the youth, right? Uh, not only in our communities, in our schools, in our homes, but also in our churches. You know, we need to be acknowledging our youth. But also, you know, it's good to give them a day because if you think about it, the, 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 uh, the youth who come to the students program, they're here for Sunday morning service. They're here for two more hours during the week, okay? Uh, some of them serve on Sunday, and then we take trips together. So honestly, a lot of them are here more than most of the adults are, right? So, uh, so you know, it's good to give them a day. But the main reason why we want to kick it off is because we are starting our, our student program back into action, uh, you know, big time back into action, because over the summer, we've been having more of like a relaxed meeting schedule, uh, not meeting every week and just kind of doing some activities and stuff, just because it's summertime and, and vacations and things. But now school's back in, right? Uh, the schedules are getting fixed, so now it's time to get the student program kicked back off weekly, back strong into full effect. So that's awesome. So today, what I want to do is I want to kind of look at the ministry a little bit, talk about what it is, um, some changes we've made, but also why it's so important. And if you don't have a, a, a child, a student age, or you don't volunteer, I ask that you don't check out on me today, all right? Because for one, I mean, this is, this, uh, this is our church, right? And these are the students in our community, and you should be concerned about what your church is teaching the students of this community, right? You should be concerned about what's going on behind High Rock Kids or what's going on with the student program, right? What are they teaching our kids? How are they handling that? But not just that, don't check out on me because really, this is everybody's responsibility, right? This is everybody's um, responsibility for this. So I'm going to start off today in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 6 through 7. If you go on to hrclex.life, you can follow along with us today with our message notes and those. And, and so what's happening here in Deuteronomy is Moses is speaking to the Israelites, okay? And this is kind of like a, a sermon and a recap on how to sustain the blessings of the promised land, all right? Because they're about to, uh, they're free from Egypt, right? And so they're about to inherit the promised land called Canaan. And so Moses is telling them, look, you know, these are things you can do to help sustain this promised land because we can receive promises from God, but sometimes by our choices, right, we give them away, right? So Moses is telling them, look, this is, this is some things you need to be doing. So in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 7, this is, this is one of the things that Moses says, hey, look, in the promised land, do this in order to uh, sustain it. So in Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 7, reads this. And these words that I command to you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. So he's saying, look, take uh, take the children, right? These generations that come, teach them, teach them my laws, right? Teach them my ways, tell them about my promises, tell them about my goodness. Be passing this down through the generations. I think it's so interesting that this is one way to sustain the blessings of God. So a question I'm asking myself today, and maybe you ask yourself the same thing, are there promises of God that we have that we're in jeopardy of losing because we are not instilling into and nourishing our children's spiritual development? Right, Because God's very adamant about us passing this down through the generations because he knows that whenever one generation fails to instill his laws and his ways and his goodness to the generations to come, then that society will quickly decline. And we've seen it all throughout history, right? It's all throughout the Old Testament with the Israelites. But also, I believe we're seeing it today. We're seeing it today, you know? They want to keep trying to take God out of everything. Well, look what's happening. I mean... It's, if not, it's a, it's a strange coincidence, right? But also, too, we are passing the baton of Christianity on to those coming through, right? 
Because Paul talks about running this race. And sometimes the race, sometimes it's a sprint, sometimes it's a marathon, but it's also, it's also a relay race, right? It's a race that we run, and then, and then we're supposed to pass the baton to the person on next to us, right? So, so we are in charge of this. This is a great duty. This is a, this is a duty that people have given their lives for. You know, people have been martyred to carry this message in the hopes that generations to come will, will continue in that hope, right, will continue in that message to pass it down. So this is, this is not only a, a responsibility, but this is an assignment directly from God to every single one of us. Every single one of us, not just parents. And so the student ministry is just as important as any other ministry, right? This is the future of our church. So we see it's important today. So now I'll just like uh, did, uh, look at the program. You know, what is it, right? What goes on in our High Rock students' ministry? So like I said, High Rock students, this is our youth program. It covers 6 through 12, right, middle school and high school. And for the moment, I am the student pastor, all right, and I love it, right? I really enjoy it, man. I really get the joy of getting to know our students and uh, hanging out with them. I'm like a kid myself. And so sometimes, honestly, I relate uh, with, uh, with the youth than I do more adults sometimes. And I like, you know, hearing the neat things that uh, our youth have to say. Like, for instance, I might ask, so why is it so important for us to pay attention and be quiet right during Sunday morning services? They might say, well, it's because everybody's sleeping. So, you know, you want to be, you want to try to, you want to try to be quiet for that. No, nah, but it is, it's a great opportunity. I get the opportunity of not only helping the students of our community to know Jesus and to build their faith, but also to help them through this very pivotal time in their life, right? This is a very transitional time in their lives where they're going to see a whole lot of different things. They've got a lot of big decisions to make. Decisions they're making now could absolutely affect the rest of their lives. You know, so, so I get to help shape and guide these. That, so not only do they get to know Jesus more, but also so they can leave this transitional period with as less damage to their personal lives as possible. That way, when they get out and go to college and go on with their lives, they have as less damage. Because I know from experience on what that can do. See, I started using uh, drugs and alcohol in the seventh grade. And so by the time I got into high school, it was an everyday thing. By the time I got out of high school, I was using prescription medications and all kinds of I've I, I done about every drug known to man by the time I, I left high school. So I had a lot of damage, right? And honestly, I didn't start getting clean and sober until 28. So I had like 16 years of this damage. So I know what it's like to, to leave your faith in, in middle school and high school and absolutely have that damage and have to pick up the pieces. And so that's what I want to try to do is to help students not have to go through that. That way, when they get out of high school, they're not only rooted in their faith, but they have a good foundation to build on. All right? That makes sense? It also says that 70% of, of high school students will deny their faith in high school just to fit in. Three out of four. So, you know, that's a, you know, that's a statistic that we don't want to try to, we want to try to combat too, right? So the way I see it, the goal and purpose of this ministry is the same as any other, right? We want to convert people to Jesus Christ, and we want to try to make disciples, right? We want to equip them for good works. We want to build the relationship with Christ. We want them to love God, to connect with others, to serve with purpose, and to lead with passion. And it's not done so differently on a Sunday morning service, just in a little different way. You know, we want it to be fun and, in, and engaging and purposeful, but at the same time, it has to be spiritual too. You know, we don't want to keep God out of this thing for the sake of fun. So basically what we do, all right, we have a, we have a student center on the other side of that wall right there. Through that door, there's a student center. All right? If you want to check it out after the service, you're free to look into it. Um, so we have, uh, we have it, it's a big facility. It's 18,000 square feet. You know, that's, that's big. I mean, I can't even count that high, you know. So, I mean, that's pretty big. And it's, uh, it's big. So, I mean, if anybody has like a couple semis they need to park or something, let us know. Maybe we can help you out there. But, nah. So we meet over there. We have a big facility, a lot of cool things to do. We have, uh, we have pool tables. Um, we see ping pong. We have air hockey over there. Uh, we got places to play soccer, right? We can play, we can play basketball, uh, play volleyball. There's an there's a arts and crafts table and a chalk wall. That's actually really popular. And uh, we have uh, gymnastic stations and, 
and uh, there's, there, there's couches, and there's video games to hang out with. So, so you see, there's a, there's a, and, and that was a lot of work done by a lot of hardworking people, and we really appreciate the work that went into all that. So, uh, so we have a great, great facility for people to meet in, just go there and hang out, and that's basically what we do. So for the first uh, 15 minutes as everybody's following in, the first thing we do is we do a check-in. All right, we want students to sign in. We need to know who's in the building. And then it goes into a computer program, so we have uh, you know, everybody who is in the building. We do check-in. And then for about the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes, like I said, we funnel in. And it's just like a free play, right? Everybody goes and runs and acts all crazy. You might have some people playing some air hockey there. Or we I usually get a random game of volleyball that starts up. Everybody likes to play volleyball a lot. So we do that. And eventually, we work our way into the auditorium here for a message. All right, we do our message. And our messages are relevant for the age range, okay, and, and understandable and, and applicable. And, and we do this in many, very, a variety of ways, right? You might have a series or something like that, you know, a series. Or, or I try to encourage students to try to give messages too. So we see uh, there were some students giving messages. Here's... Uh, Here's Callista, right? This is, this is me and my wife's 14-year-old giving, giving a message. And, you know, when she came up to me and said, Andy, you know, I want to help give a message one day. And, of course, I had to play it cool. I was like, okay, yeah, cool. That's fine. But on the inside, I'm like, yeah, boy, that's what I'm talking about. You go, girl. <laughs> She's like, if there's a definition of embarrassment in the dictionary, this is it right now. <laughs> so, yeah, so we do series of stuff. But also, too, I like Bibles. You know, sometimes we'll just pass out the Bibles, and I'll tell them the book we're in and the verse we're in. They have to find it themselves, you know, because they need to know how to map a Bible. They need to know where the index is. They need to know how to work a Bible and where different books are. So, you know, we'll do that. But also, too, like technology. I even use technology in my advantage. Uh, one time we had a, we had a series based based upon devotion on the Bible app. So they had to go on the, on the uh, Internet, find the Bible app. They had to go on the Bible app, search for the uh, devotional, and find it all. They had to do it all themselves, so that way I can guide them and show them, uh, you know, different things on technology that can help them grow in their faith as well. So we see that. And also, too, I encourage families a lot, right? Family, fam I'm a big family guy. I believe in family, so we're trying to make family stronger. So anytime there's a family holiday coming up, we always prep for it, and I always like them to be ready. So, like, uh, this is a picture of us, of us uh, doing, doing Father's Day, right? This was for Father's Day, so we went and we did some arts and crafts for Father's Day as well. Now, sometimes, uh, sometimes uh, we have events for different holidays. So, like, for, for Easter, we did an Easter egg hunt in the student center, right? There's an the Easter egg hunt. And by the way, some of these pictures aren't very good because I don't have a good phone. Like, my wife and the girls have the good phones, you know? I actually have my daughter's hand-me-down, right? So, uh, I'm about three, three generations back of the good phones. So, 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 bear with me with the pictures. But also, too, uh, we'll just have a makeshift day. Like this July, man, when it was like 1,000 degrees outside, right? I went, I said, let's have a water day, all right? So I went, we got a pool, right? So everybody went and had fun in the pool. We had a, a water balloon toss game. And then, and then we did a friend challenge where you have to answer questions about your friend. And if you don't get it right, then you get soaked by water. So obviously, Ronald, the leader there, got that very wrong because he got soaked with a bucket of water. So, uh, so that's that. And, of course, too, you know, we want students to give back. And so for Christmas, we did uh, some Christmas cards for elderly, all right, and took them to elderly. Uh, that was uh, us making cards. And also, too, you know, like students to volunteer. So uh, we asked some students to volunteer. You may have seen it when you walked in today, right? We have some students volunteering because there's nothing like free child labor. <laughs> so then we break in stress and messages. You know, we try to message try to be fun, relevant, right, try to keep their attention, but also be spiritual and learn about God at the same time. And a lot of the messages, you know, I mean, they're about God and forgiveness and His love, which are great, but also, too, the situations they're going through in their lives. You know, we try to pick out situations going through their lives, what the Bible has to say and how to apply it. Like I said, trying to shape and guide them through this time of their life. All right, so after that, then we break into small groups. Okay, we break into small groups, and this is really where the you know, where the meat happens. Because it's hard to just hear 
on the message. And so, so whenever we break into small groups, this is really where we get to learn more about the students. You know, this is where conversations happen. Uh, like I said, we can learn about struggles they're facing and what they're going through. And, and usually we try to keep it gender specific, right? Like the girls will go with the girls and the guys with the guys. And we have a leader for it, of course. But this is something right here, the picture I brought in today. This is, uh, this is us just staying together at one point because sometimes you know it's good to get other people's views of a topic so sometimes i'll keep the students together because one thing i am big on is building relationships building relationships with people you normally wouldn't because you know high school and middle school they're just so separated you know you got your cliques and every and nobody talks so i don't want to be like that here you know everybody's fair right everybody's everybody's the same type of person right we want to love on everybody so i try to encourage uh, this relationship building, and that's one of the ways that we can do it. So we have the small groups, all right? And that's like the connect groups, right? That's why we value connect groups so much because of the relationships that are built in those connect groups. So after that, we go back into the student center, and we have snacks, okay? And we have snacks, of course, because you know that youth love, love to eat, right? They're always asking, what's for snack today? What's for snack today? <laughs> So uh, this is us doing hot chocolate and, and cookies because, you know, we want to mix it around a little bit, do something fun, do something creative. And then we do a group game. And then we do a group game. Once again, helps build uh, cohesion, you know, is a technical term for when you, when you form a group, cohesion. And, uh, you know, we try to do group games. This is us playing kickball outside, right? One day we went outside and played kickball. That was really fun, uh, especially when you chase the ball a 1,000 yards across the big parking lot. It's always fun, especially when you're old like me. And then... Um, and then sometimes we just have like a free play, right? And sometimes crazy stuff like this happens where you get the paint and paint gets everywhere, right? Everybody's, everybody's painting. And that's, that's the days when I leave and I'm going, oh, Pastor Mike's going to kill me, right? There's paint everywhere. <laughs> Staying late today. So that's fun. And we also took a couple trips. You know, for Christmas, uh, we went to a place called the Bethlehem Village. That was really awesome. This big, this big setup, it was in High Point. And that's me and two of the students. Me and two of the students, I'm in the middle there. That's what it looks like when I don't shave. So, so my wife always keeps extra razors. So. And then we went to Dan Nicholas Park, too. That was fun. And we went up there every summer. We played, we played some mini golf, uh, did some paddle boating. And, uh, yeah, did some paddle boating. And then, see, that's what happens when an old guy tries to take a selfie. You see me, and I'm sitting there going, hey, wait, is this thing taken? Is this one? Huh? I can't, I can't see everybody, right? You know, that's what happens when, when old people, right? That's right. So, yeah, so we did some paddle boating, and then we ate, right? Had a big meal. The Patrick's man had cooked out for us. It was nice, and everybody ate, and it was fun. It was hot. It was hot, but, man, it was fun. See, so that's, so that's a lot of what the program is. You know, we're trying to grow together, trying to bond, trying to have fun, doing different things, um, I have a great time. I think the students seem to have a great time as well. Now, the big, the big win for this is the fact that over this past uh, semester of students, we had six youth give their hearts to Christ, and over three were baptized, that I know of. <laughs> and that's a win. That's a win to me. Because a lot of times, wins are, are in numbers, right? Everybody looks at numbers and tries to decide what's going on. Well, numbers aren't always wins to me because if, the, if students are coming and they're giving their heart to the Lord, right, and they're learning the Bible, they're learning how to apply the Bible in their lives, right? They're being shaped by Jesus Christ. They're talking to people they normally wouldn't talk to unless they were here, and they're having fun doing it, you know, because... A, uh, the time always sneaks up on us, and some of the parents literally have to come in and drag their kids out. So to me, that's a win. That's a win. I'd rather have 20 or 30 kids who are knowing Christ than 200 or 300 kids eating pizza. Yeah. So we had a good time. So we had a good time, and the ministry's healthy. But of course, there's always room for improvement, right? It, anything can always improve, and so we've learned over the past. And there's going to be some uh, different things we're going to imply just quickly. Uh, uh, Bible verse memory. I didn't do as much as that as I wanted to, so we're definitely going to make sure that we're memorizing uh, more verses this time. There's also uh, fun group games. I'm getting outside the box a little bit from the student center. I've done some research on some games, and they seem pretty fun. Also, a pickup route. Uh, we had a challenge where students wanted to come but couldn't, so now I've called and I've, I've got a, a rides, uh, the vans available now for 
for rides for students who, who don't have one. So that's great. You know, that's awesome. Uh, some other things, maybe a little bit more food and also a little bit more music. Okay, so there's just some things that we're going to uh, apply this time. Now, the two major changes we've been announcing over the past few weeks, one of them, of course, is the fact that during this next time, at some point, I will be transitioning out as the student leader, okay? Uh, whenever I took the position, it wasn't implied that I would be there, you know, forever. Uh, this was a uh, interim position, and it's come to the time, all right? But it doesn't mean doom and gloom, right? God's going to send somebody who's awesome. God's going to send somebody who's strong. The ministry's going to be strong. I'm not going anywhere. I still have, obviously, children who are in there, so I'm not going anywhere. I'm still available. It's going to be a slow transition. And they're not going to be thrown in. We're going to make sure they're a good fit with the students. So, I mean, it's going to be it's going to be a nice, safe transition. Like I said, I'll still be there to help out. I just won't be overseeing it, okay? So, so we're going to have a new student leader. So if that interests you, please let us know, okay? Please let us know, and I, please let me know because I want to help out in any way to help you out as well. Also, too, the next major change is that we move the program from Sunday from 3 to 5 to Wednesdays on 6 to 8 for a few reasons. Uh, for one, I talked to the parents, and they seem like it works into the school schedule a little better, right? You can just kind of fling it in there as part of the school schedule. Also, too, the way I feel about it is I think that it's going to help build families, right? And this is why I see it that way. Because for one thing, if we're in school and we got homework, we got sports, we got all these things going on during the week, and then Saturday comes, you got to wake up early, you got to play catch up for things you couldn't do over your house. Then Sunday comes, you wake up first thing Sunday, you're at church Sunday, you come back on Sunday. I mean, when do people have time to sit down? When, when are families resting? All right, so the way, I, the way I see it is, the week's already busy. Fling youth in there, right? Uh, uh, put youth in there, put it part of the schedule. Then when Sunday comes, come to church together, go home, spend time together. Watch football, cook out, do whatever you want to, but this will help build stronger families. Also, Bible studies on Wednesday night at the same time. So now, while the students are in there getting their Jesus on, the parents can be in the Bible study learning as well. Right, So that's going to be a family spiritual growing time, which leaves the opportunity also for like a nursery spiritual growing time as well. So, so if, if anybody feels like you want to volunteer, because some people can't come to Bible study because they have child care needs, you know, and I have a young family, so I know what it's like not to be able to go somewhere because of that. So if you feel like you want to help out with that, that'd be awesome. And here's the deal. I, my hope is so many people volunteer that we can have a rotation, right? So if you get like 12 people uh, wanting to do it, then you can do it once a month, and then the other three, you can attend your Bible study or, or volunteer however you want to handle it, right? So if we get that to happen, the whole family is ministered to on Wednesday. I mean, come on. Everybody be in prayer for that, because you know what? That makes the heart of the Father smile. Absolutely, absolutely does. So please let us know. And there's a, you know, so the student ministry, there's kind of a lot to it. You know, you got messages, you got production, you got games, uh, you got you to gotta do missions trips and service projects. And honestly, that's a lot for somebody to take on. You know, it really is. And, and we have volunteers, but we could definitely use more, honestly. Uh, we could definitely use more. But see, if you have enough people to help, then it's not a lot because somebody plans out the service project, somebody helps out with the messages, see, and then it, as it's dispersed, so that's where we honestly need you guys, right? This is where we need you guys because I need you and a new, and a new person taking on this role needs you, okay? It's a lot for one person, but it's not a lot for a team of people, all right? The body of Christ, we'll just call it that, so to speak, right? But not only do I need you and the new leader needs you, God needs you. God needs you. The students need you. The students need you. I mean, because think about it. The age ranges that we're dealing with, 6 through 12, right, middle school and high school, some of the common problems that they face internally are they feel invisible or they feel like they're talking and nobody's listening. They feel like nobody really truly cares about them or understands them. And if you look around the church globally, this could be an issue. For one, students aren't hardly greeted on Sunday morning. You know, we spend a lot of time making sure that the adults feel welcome, but how many times do we walk up to a, to, to a student and shake their hand and say, man, I'm so glad you're here. I'm just so glad you're here today. And if the students walk into a youth ministry and nobody's there for them, I mean, what signal is that really sending off? 
That's no differently from the world. You know, that's no different from the world. So, and our children are observant, right? They notice these things. You know, they, or they really notice these things. So the signals that we're sending off are, you're invisible. I don't care what you have to say. We're not concerned with your spiritual development. I'm not saying this church. I'm saying the church globally. But see, that's not the God I know. The God I know cares. The God I know absolutely cares and is absolutely listening and is absolutely pursuing. So as the body of Christ, we can come together and be, and be Jesus to these children. To these children. Because honestly, it's not a game, right? This is not a game. This is not a joke. This is the children of our community that we are talking about. And if our children are seeking God and if we're not there for them, then we could be inhibiting them from the kingdom. Like in the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Because listen, listen, now I'm going to start getting into why is this so important, right? Why is this such a big deal? Well, in Mark 10, 13, uh, this is Jesus talking, all right? This is Jesus dealing with the crowd. And this is what's happening. It reads this. And they meaning parents, were bringing children to him, Jesus, that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked him. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a small child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms, and he blessed them, laying his hands on them. There's people bringing children to Jesus. And his followers are standing there saying, no, 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 no. Don't you go to Jesus. He doesn't have time for you. He doesn't want to be bothered by children. He's got better things to do. And Jesus, in front of everybody, rebukes him. Oh, whoa, whoa, time out. Don't you ever hinder a child from coming to me. And he goes and he grabs them up in his arms and he blesses them and he loves on them. If parents are bringing their children here, hoping that Jesus will touch them. They're dropping them off at a church for a youth program saying, man, I hope Jesus touches my child's heart today. I hope he touches their minds. I hope he's saying to them what I'm trying to say to them at home. I hope it gets through. I hope Jesus is touching them. But if there's nobody here, then we are hindering them from the kingdom of God. Not by our actions, but by our inaction. And that does not make Jesus smile. That's a rebuke from the Lord. Because he takes this very seriously. He takes this very seriously. Because like I said, think about the age range. 6th through 12th grade, right? They're stepping deeper into this world. They're about to face some very heavy and some, various, and some very serious situations that could absolutely change the course of their life. And this is what they're stepping into. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, this is what Paul writes. He's talking to other people. He says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins, in verse 2, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. The sons of disobedience are fallen angels. They're called demons. Prince of the power of the air, that's Satan. And they have a course of this world. So our children are stepping into this course of this world. And if we are not there to combat it, if we are not there to show them biblical truths, this is the teaching they're going to receive. This is what they're going to think is right and wrong if they do not receive true, honest teaching. And so Paul says, he goes on in in Ephesians chapter 6, he reads, he says this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. See, our children are stepping into this. They are stepping into a war zone, a spiritual war zone. By the way, most adults are losing in, right? So do our children, do do they have the helmet of salvation? Do they have the breastplate of righteousness? Do they have the shield of faith? Do they have the sword of the Spirit, right? The word of the Lord? If they do not have this, if they do not have spiritual armor, they have no armor at all. They are sitting 
ducks. They are sitting ducks. Because the devil, he is scheming against our youth. He is. He is getting into their minds now more than ever, especially through the Internet. Especially through the Internet. He, he is telling our youth, look, you're not worthy. Nobody likes you. Your body, it's not attractive. You know what? You should harm yourself. No, no, no. You should kill yourself. Especially through all this bullying. And we used to be able to get, uh, get away from bullies because you, you leave school and you go home and you're away from them. Now they're cyber bullies. Now the bully follows them home. And so now through this, our, our children are killing themselves in record numbers because their identity is found in that bully and not in Jesus Christ. Nobody's there to tell them, oh, no, 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 you're, you're worthy just the way you are. Nobody loves you. I know a God who loves you enough to die for you. You are perfect in his sight. And so now this whole thing that drugs, sex, and alcohol can, can solve your internal problems, right, the things of this world has been a teaching, but now at the push of a button, now they have way more access to it, especially adult material. 10, 11, 12-year-olds, knowing what this stuff is, seeing it, looking at it. 11-year-old girl dating an 11-year-old girl. 12-year-old boys dating 12-year-old boys. All the stuff in which the Word of God says this will absolutely hinder your life, right? This is not good. The course of this world. And it's everywhere. It's all in our culture. This is the way our culture is going. It's all over the TV. It's all in the songs our kids are singing. They're renewing their minds with it every day. And our kids are searching for answers, right? They know there's something out there. They know there's, there's something spiritual out there. They're looking for a spiritual path. They're looking for a greater purpose. They are looking to be involved in something bigger than themselves. And so the world has all kinds of paths that lead to destruction ready to take our children on it. But does the church have a path of true life ready to take our children on it too? Youth programs. That's what youth programs do. Give our children the correct path. Because the truth is, we can't shield them from it, right? We can't live in a God box and not go outside. They're exposed to it. So what we have to do is while they're exposed to it, we have to be there to combat it. We have to be there to show them the right way, the true way. Like I said, be there to help them not only be rooted in their faith, but be able to make decisions according to the Bible so that way when they get out of high school, they have this good foundation, this good root to build off of for the rest of their lives. And if we can do that, those are wins. Those are wins. Because there's a lot of people speaking to our children, folks. We need to be speaking to our children too. Biblical truth. Because here's the deal. If they don't hear that sin is wrong, and God is right, they're going to hear that sin is right and God is wrong. And Jesus doesn't like that one either. In Matthew 18, 6, Jesus says this, Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. God is very serious about this. He says, look, if you're teaching my little ones to sin, it's better for you to, to drown yourself in the sea than to deal with what I got ready for you. And that's serious. Like I said, it's not a game. It's not a joke, right? As much as I want this part of the message to be fun and laugh and everybody ha having fun, God said no. And you know what? He's absolutely right. It's, it's not a laughing matter. It's not a joke. We should be very concerned. But the cool thing is, it doesn't have to be like this, right? That doesn't have to be a reality. We can come together as the body of Christ. We can come together to do this together. And this is great. Like in 1 Timothy 4.12, this is a verse that God's really resonating on my heart for the, for the course of the student ministry going forward for this semester. It's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Paul writes this, Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to, to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. 
Our kids can be examples, right? Because this is the deal. We're either going to equip our children to change the world, or we're going to let the world change our children. They can be examples. An example means you're doing what nobody else is doing. See, this is called following. An example is way over here somewhere because you're doing what nobody else is doing, and it doesn't matter what anybody else is thinking, right? You are the example. Our kids can be the example. And if you read around the first Timothy, it tells how to do it. You have to be engulfed in the Word, right? And you, uh, you know, build your relationship and don't deny your spiritual gifts. All things that we're going to dig into in the student program going forward. And I love it. Be an example, right? Don't let anyone think less of you because of your youth. So many times we look at our youth and we think less. You need to be following my example. Well, check this out. Remember what I said? If the dedicated students who are in our student program, they're here for church, they're here for two more hours, they volunteer, and they take trips. So they're here more than most adults. So if you're a dedicated student in this room right now, look around at the adults around you and say, you need to follow my example. Of course, they're not going to do it, right? They're like, I ain't saying that to the adults. You're crazy. I, don't know. I ain't saying that. An example. They're already, you're already setting examples, students. You're already setting examples, great examples. So that's the thing, see? We can come together as a body of Christ. We can help this, right? We can, we can help change and shape and mold our students. That's why we need volunteers, right? We do. We need volunteers. And it's only two hours a week. It sounds like a lot, but think about Think about the, the change that has happened. Think about the life change out of those two hours that can happen. We can be here for a student who wants to kill themselves because they got somebody just, 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 just you know, on and on and on badgering them on the Internet. But we can be the ones that can step in and change their life forever. That's worth two hours to me. We can say, look. All these people out there, they're doing drugs, they're doing alcohol, and they're going to tell you all these empty promises that, man, this can change you, and this can, you know, this can deliver all these promises. This is wrong. If we can save a child from addiction, that's worth two hours to me. So parents, bring them out. Bring your children out. They may not want to come, but, I mean, how many youth really want to come, Right? But I know for me, whenever, whenever I was a child, I was at youth, I was at church, and I was at youth. And sometimes I wanted to go, sometimes I didn't, right? Because I was a child. But later, 15 years later, when I was tired of addiction, I was tired of leaving this, living that way, guess what I fell back on? My childhood faith. All those things I was taught that sometimes I didn't want to go to came through, and that's exactly what we're doing. We are planting seeds. And I'm going to tell you, parents, if it's not important to you, it's not going to be important to them. You never know. They just might like it. Same with you students. I say this a lot. You're making decisions now that's going to affect the rest of your life. Nobody's holding your hand at the water fountain anymore, so to speak. Okay? So, you know, the decisions you're making now is going to affect your family. It's going to affect your cause. It's going to affect your finances as you get older. And so, you know, making the right decisions, this is a good decision to make because you can come up here, right? You can meet new people. You can find a new way of living. It's a safe place. It's a pause button on life as well. I like to say it because this is a safe place. What's said in group stays in group. It doesn't get away. You have people who are here who, who, who care for you, who are ready to listen. If you feel like nobody's listening to you, there's somebody listening here. If you feel like nobody loves you, somebody loves you here. If you feel like the title of your way of living one new way of life, there's a new way of life here. So if you want to make some good decisions, come on here as well. So we can come together and we can be this body of Christ. So my prayer, my goal, my vision, man, is this Wednesday, right? This Wednesday, we're going to blow this student program out of the water. Right, we're going to blow it out of the water, man. Students are going to show up. They're going to be ready, right? We're going to greet. There's going to be people here greeting them. We're going to say, you're not invisible to me. If you've got something to say, I'm here. I'm here for you, right? You are not, you are not just some student wandering the street, right? I am here for you. This is going to be a new path. This is going to be a new way, right? We're going to have, we're going to have plenty of volunteers. We're going to have plenty of students. We're going to, we're, we're going to start this program off right, and we're, we're going to be a lighthouse, we're going to be alive. We're going to shape and change the, the, the students of our community. And when we do that, God will bless it. God will absolutely bless it.
So I hope. We have a God who left perfect paradise to come down and minister to his children. Took the time out of his day. Showed them he loved them. Never gave up on them. Gave his life for his children. We have the perfect model. The gospel. I just pray the gospel can resonate in our hearts and minds so much that we can't help but give it back. And that's what this is. Giving back to the God who gave all. Father, I just thank you so much for your example. God, we are all your children. Jesus, you love us. In our hurt, in our pain, in our darkest days, no matter how far away we stray, no matter where we go, you're always there for your children. Even as adult children, God, we're confused. We feel invisible. We feel like nobody's listening, but we always have a God who is. You're always there for us, God. You have given us this example. God, I pray that we can give this example back. Jesus, I love your passion for the children. You always want them near you. You always want them. They never got on your nerves. What got on your nerves was the people who thought they got on your nerves. Father, break our hearts for what breaks yours. Father, you are, you are here with us, Lord. You are looking on this world, and you are hearing the hearts of your children. You are hearing kids sit in the corner in a cafeteria crying because everybody's making fun of them. You're seeing kids in broken homes, parents fighting, parents divorced, children who have addicted parents who are taking care of their parents when they get home. You're seeing kids who eat only once a day at, at school. You're looking down on these children wondering if anybody loves them. And you're reaching out. And you have these churches, you have, you have youth programs, you have these people who claim to be your followers. And you're saying, be my hands, be my feet, this child needs you. In six months, if you do not do something, I can read his thoughts, he's killing himself. This child has not eaten in two days. Make him a hot dog. This child thinks he's worthless. This girl over here is ready to have these relations with these boys just because she doesn't get any love and affection at home. So that's the only way she knows is to give up her body so that these boys will pay attention to her. Father, you see the youth of this nation being led astray, being led away from you, and it absolutely breaks your heart. You're absolutely reaching out to your children. This is not a game to you, Father. This is not a joke. This is a very real situation that breaks your heart. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. Let us give our time, let us give our talents, let us give our energies, Lord, to showing the children of this community that High Rock Church of Lexington absolutely loves them and is for them and is ready to minister to them at any moment. God, let this Wednesday just be so explosive that it rocks the gates of hell. I hope Satan gets slapped in the face because there's so much ministry going on here. All the lies that he's telling them, I hope he cowers. I hope he says, oh, no, they're going to High Rock Church. Uh-oh. They're going to be told the truth. I hope he rocked the gates of hell on Wednesday. So, Father, we pray that you bless it. If you're not in it, there's no point in it. But if you're in it, there's nothing that can stop it. So, Father, we give this ministry to you. We give our hearts to you. We give our time to you. And we pray that we can absolutely change the lives of the students in our communities this Wednesday.
and from beyond, from now on out. Father, I thank you so much for your love and your forgiveness. Pray for your Holy Spirit to minister in our hearts today. In Jesus Christ, holy name that we pray. Amen.